You know what the shocking thing about ChatGPT and models like it? Despite their command of language and their ability to write and converse, uh, and that they were trained on massive amounts of text data, the shocking thing is that they've really never seen one human word. I'll let you know exactly what that means, but they've never really seen a word like you and I see it. They see numbers. And these numbers are translations by something called a tokenizer. So let's take a look at tokenizers and how they empower large language models. Now, this video is a preview of content you will see in my upcoming book that I'm co-writing with Martin Kuldendorst, who is an incredible developer focused on NLP. Uh, he's the developer behind Bird Topic and other awesome open source libraries, and he's an incredible explainer of concepts. So if you want to learn more, check out the book, sign up to the newsletter for updates until then. Now let's get down into tokenizers. Okay, so you might have tried large language models before, kind of like ChatGPT. You have this text box and you can enter a prompt or a message that you want to send to the language model. So let's say I want to send a message like this. It's a command saying, write an email apologizing to Sarah for the tragic gardening mishap. Explain how it happened, right? A few things that are built into this the expectations that we want this uh, model to do. So we want the model to write something that looks like an email. Maybe it starts with Dear Sarah. And then we want it to be apologetic. And then we want it to also, we're asking it to make up a story to explain what happened. We gave it no context of, of that. We can send this to the model and see what it responds with. And it, it says, okay. A subject, sincere apology for the tra tragic gardening mishap. Dear Sarah, I hope this email finds you well. Apologies. Let me start by explaining the unfortunate. And then it made up a story and it wrote sort of an email. You can do the same thing with the cohere um, command model. And it says, hi, Sarah, I wanted to send you a quick note to apologize again for the gardening incident. Uh, and then the story, I was doing some gardening in the backyard. Okay, so this is a prompt and it's response. Uh, it's the kind of behavior you're starting to expect from large language models if you've been interacting with them. So I will take you to this example here and show you some code that I'm running um, against a uh, open source large language model because we'll go a little bit deeper into how it works and how tokenization factors into this process. So this is a simple piece of initial code. This is our prompt, the same one. Write an email, apologize to Sarah, explain how it happens. And then we can execute or run this uh, prompt. It will send the prompt into generation. It will, we ask, we're asking it to generate only one token here and just print the output once it... Uh, so here's the output. It was printed and it just uh, repeated the entire prompt, but the generation what it generated is this, this one token or one word here. It's called express. So it seems that it's just continuing what the prompt is asking for. We can ask it to generate 10, but generating one token is an important thing because that's what happens in the background. I'll, I'll show you an example of a longer prompt, but then what really just happened there? You know, generate is a function that I, I defined, but what really happens underneath it is kind of like this. These are the three or four steps. So here we have our prompt. Here we have tokenize the text. So the prompt actually goes into not the model at first, into this other piece of software called the tokenizer that returns something called input ID, uh, IDs. And then we generate the text. And then let's say we print the result. Now, if you can read this code along with me, you see the prompt is going into the tokenizer and then giving us the input IDs. And then the input IDs are what we pass to the model. And then we just tell it to generate only one new token. The prompt did not really go into the model at all aside from these input IDs. So the tokenizer is really translating uh, the text 
this is how, how we got that same generation express. Now, let's inspect what is input IDs, because this is really what the model sees. The model didn't see any of this. So what does input IDs look like? We can print it, and we can see that it's a list of numbers. This is a list of integers. It starts with one and then with a bunch of other ones. And so this is really how the text, how the model sees the world in these individual numbers. But what do they mean? Uh, before we do that, let's recap a little bit. So we have the input prompt, the input text that goes through the tokenizer. The tokenizer breaks it down into tokens and then passes the token IDs to the language model. And that's really the input to the model. That's the kind of text that the model sees. And that's what the model ends up outputting. So we have this list of one, 14,350, 385. What are these numbers? What are these input IDs or token IDs? Well, we can use the tokenizer to tell us what they are. Uh, these are basically IDs. Each one of them is associated with a token or a word inside of the tokenizer. So we can do this and then we can just iterate through that list and print each one of them. And so this is token number one. It just says it's a special token that says, you know, start of the string. And then here we can see each token that was broken down from our prompt. So write an email, apologize. Apologizing is another token, so apologizing is two tokens. So that's why this is what's called sub-word tokenization. So not every word is a token. A lot of words are their own tokens. You know, some longer words are broken down into two or three tokens. Apologizing to Sarah for the tragic. So tragic was broken down into two tokens. Garden-ing is, is two words. Mishap. You can see it's three. The dot is its own token. The period explain how it happened. So this is the actual again, input into, into the model. And then if we translate it for us to read, it looks like this. And then another aspect of this is also that the model really does not generate words. It generates a number like this. This is all of it, all it's seen, all it's trained on is like lists of numbers kind of like this. And to prove that to you, this is the one thing that the model outputted, this generation output. And we can look at it and it is a list of numbers. And this is the input prompt and this is just the new token that the model is, is outputting. And then we can just look what that token is and then it says express. So really one way to think about a tokenizer is that it's a piece of software that has this table inside of it with token IDs and the token. And it gets text and it consults this table um, and just translates it because the model only understands this column, not the text that we uh, actually read and see. Now, the one thing that you should uh, pay attention to as well is that the model has something called embeddings. Uh, has an embeddings table. And then if we have, let's say 50,000 tokens, the model has 50,000 embedding vectors. So these are representations for these tokens uh, that capture their meaning. So if we pass the model, let's say token number one, the model has more information than just this number one, this integer one. No, it has a vector that represents it from the various sequences that it has seen in the training set. So this is another thing that links the model and the tokenizer is that for however many tokens that are defined in the tokenizer, there are embeddings in the language model that represent these tokens. And we can, we can look at them here. So this model is called open chat. These are hugging face transformers. This is based on the llama model. And you can see that the tokenizer has a vocabulary of 32,000. And then the model, if you, output, if you print the model, these are the layers, the various layers of the model. So this is the embeddings layer. So this is a matrix of 32,000. Again, this corresponds to this. What is the additional one? I don't know. 5120, that is my understanding, would be the 
that is the vector size. So each one of these embeddings is a vector of this size. And then here you can see the other layers inside the model. So layers and then about 40 layers. Each of them are these at self-attention and then the feed forward neural network or MLP multi-layer perceptron transformer block. So these are like 40 transformer blocks on top of each other. And if we wanted, we can browse into the embeddings and actually retrieve these, these uh, vectors. So we can say model dot dot model dot embed tokens. So this gets us all the way to the embeddings layer. And then this is a matrix of 32,000 dimensions on one axis and 5,120. What we want to say is give us the first vector uh, representing token number one or dump token number, you know, any number of, of these that, that we want. So I don't know, this is express, right? So what we would want to say is give us this number. So we need to turn this into a PyTorch long tensor. Torch dot long tensor. And then here we put in the number of the token. So it was 14,000 something, something, something. It needs to be inside of a thing. And so here you have it. These, this is the embedding of token number 14,657, which corresponds to the word express. This is how it is represented inside the model. That's how that token is uh, the, the vector that represents that, that model. And we can get that vector. We can say vector equals, so give us that, return it to us. And then we can say, give us the shape. And you can see that is one vector with 5,000 that's a large embedding size, I must say. I did not know Llama. I didn't really look very closely at the Llama architecture, but yeah, this is um, an interesting size today I learned. With that, let's wrap it up and summarize what we've learned here today. So you think of large language models as things, pieces of software that accept text and generate text kind of looking like this, and that's correct. But you can dig a little deeper and understand that the, there's a tokenizer that splits the text and translates it into token IDs, and that is really what the model sees. So these are passed down to it. And then how it breaks down text, that's another topic, but this is the high level overview. And then, the model really only sees lists of numbers, um, of integers identifying the tokens, and the tokenizer has this table, this lookup table of token IDs and the actual tokens, which contain words, but also parts of words. And then for every token that the tokenizer knows, there is a vector inside the model associated with it uh, that captures its meaning that uh, the model learned from its training process. You can look at these tokens. So these are 5,000. We can print the top the first 100. We can just say, give us these and okay. Number zero is unknown. Unk, U-N-K, that stands for unknown. Token number one is the start. Uh, the token number two is the end. And then here you start seeing these other characters and you can go farther. You can say, okay, show me from 1000 to 1100. You can start to see sort of parts of word appearing. So I E D E R stat. And so these are not in sequence, but these are just based on how maybe frequent these words are in the training text. Tokenizers have a vocabulary size. Models have an embeddings layer associated with it with the same plus or minus one. And we can retrieve those embeddings and look at them if we wanted, but it's not really something we need to do. So this has been a quick look 
at tokenizers a very important piece of the puzzle that is large language models and the reason really why these models have never seen words before they've only seen numbers i hope you've enjoyed this please let me know if you have any feedback don't forget to like subscribe but also subscribe to the newsletter for updates on our upcoming book hands-on large language models thank you and see you in the next one